Slime guys, we found back again with another video. And today's video is in response to a query posted on the Excel and Word uh, group on um, Facebook. And what this uh, person uh, is saying is that I've got the the posting pasted here. That there's a company total tab as well as department by department tabs that are formatted to calculate a fiscal year April to 31st of March. Each, uh, what I need is a post to indicate monthly totals starting in January and going through December. Okay, for example, you would start in January 2014 and calculate totals by January. Okay, and you go and so, so forth. Essentially, what the, what he's also saying is uh, they have a, a, a rolling total, a running total. What is the rolling aggregate total? Same thing as a running total. And uh, what I have done is I've uh, to simulate. Uh, this request I've got some data here uh, this is uh, sort of the same data I've used previously in my uh, pivot table uh, examples of the sales record of a company that supplies uh, products to fast food uh, restaurants and pizza parlors in the in the New York uh, state area okay now uh, this is what I've done instead of three departments I've taken three products french fries tomato ketchup and pizza and then the, you've got the order date, you've got the revenue for each order and the cost of goods sold for that particular order, meaning what uh, if this sale was one million, the you supplied, uh, supplied, uh, you supplied French fries for one million, which cost you as a supplier 786,000. Okay, so the difference of these two is your margin. Okay, now. Here we have the running total of the revenue and the running total of the goods sold. So let's see how we did that also. For the first entry, what we'll do is, it's the same as the revenue, okay? Now, the second entry is going to be the previous uh, running total plus the new revenue and so on and so forth. So if I go, say for example, line number five is the previous running total plus the, sub the, the revenue for the um, fifth entry okay now this is coming to 4.6 uh, 6, million so let's check if our math is correct uh, th since this is a running total if I were to add this up I should get this which I do down here 4.668196 it's exactly the same as this uh, same in the case as the cost of goods sold uh, 3.59 and that's exactly what I'm getting here. All right, so now uh, this is a, like I said, this is a running total. And what this person wants is total for each month, okay? So not quite the running total. So what we are going to do is, we are first going to set up to uh, what I like to call helper columns, okay? What I'm going to do is, I'm gonna take the first entry and take the date on the entry and roll it back to the first date for of that month okay so the first entry is uh, 2nd of Ju uh, January 2016 I'm going to roll it back to the 1st of January similarly this is going to be first this is going to be first this is also going to be the 1st of January 1st of January all the way and down to here it's going to the all these the first, this column here is going to show first of January. And then suddenly because now we've got February entries, this is going to show first of February. So let's see how you how you do that. Uh, essentially what you do is you take this date. And like I said, I've done a video on uh, you know, rolling back to the beginning of the month and the end of the month uh, on, the, on YouTube. So I do urge you to go and watch that. I'll put a link for that video in the, in the description. So what you do is you take this, uh, date and you subtract the number of days uh, of the number of days in the month now what you do is you are subtracting uh, 2 from 2nd of Jan so when you subtract you go back 2 days so uh, basically what you do you will, you will end up have what will end up happening is you will end up on the 31st of December 2015 so we have actually gone one day further back so I just add one take care of that and now I have 1st of Jan okay so I'm just going to double click and you know post it down 
so that now all the way up to 31st of Jan, you see the, 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 the first is 1st of Jan, and then now I have February, now it's 1st of February. Now the second set helper column, uh, what I'm going to do is I need to know what is the last date of this month. In case of January, it's going to be 31st. In case of February, it's going to be either 28 or 29, depending on whether it's a leap year or not. Uh, 2016 was a leap year, so the last date of February 2016 is going to be the 29th. And then you have March, which again uh, is 31st, uh, March 31st. Last date is March 31st, and April is would be April 30th. So let's see how we would do that. So what we do is we take the, the take this, and what we'll do is we'll add 35. It could be anything uh, bigger than uh, 31, any number bigger than 31, because you've got 31. You have a possibility of having days which have 31 days. So I. I you know, I make it a habit of just adding 35 and subtracting the same. Now, if you remember what I had told you, since we have added 35, what that would do is that would tip, you, tip it over to the next month, okay? Because uh, if I were to add 30 to Jan 1st, that would make it 31st. If I were to add 30, uh, uh, 31 that will make it uh, February 1st so I just want to make sure I'm, I've gone far ahead into the next month now when I'm subtracting like I did here if I subtract the same and I don't add one I have I end up going uh, and landing on the last day of the previous month but because I've added 35 it took me uh, into the next month so when I land to the last date of the previous month that would be the current month but the last date okay there you go. So, uh, in case of 2nd Jan, the first date would be 1st of Jan. The last date would be the 31st of Jan. Now, like I said, February 2016 was a leap year. So, if you do it this way, this is smart enough, Excel is smart enough to realize that. And it will put to uh, 29th of February. So, let's just double click and uh, have this uh, formula you know, paste all the way down. And there you have it. Okay. So, till this point you have your sales for January so 1st of January and 31st of January beginning of the month end of the month from this point onwards you have the sales for February so the starting of the month will be 1st of February ending of the month is the 29th of February all right so uh, like I said this is method is smart enough to figure out that 26th uh, 2016 was a leap year all right, now let's go to the next step. What we have here is running totals. We don't want that. What we want is total for the month of Jan. Okay, so here what we're going to do is we're going to use a sum if formula. Okay, now um, I'm going to stop here and uh, you know urge you to. Uh, review uh, a video I had done on sum if and count if what it does is it's a conditional sum uh, it will only add up numbers if certain conditions are true which will specify in this list here all right so uh, it's sum if it's asking for the sum range we what we'll do is we we'll give it the revenue revenue is what we will be summing up and the criteria range would be this guy here, this order date. And now it's asking for the criteria and we will give it that it needs to be greater than or equal to first of, the second of Jan needs to be greater than or equal to the first of Jan. The second thing that needs to happen is, the second criteria is that this date is less than or equal to the end of the month of Jan. Okay, so we are adding up the revenue, provided that th that this date is between the first of Jan and thirty first of Jan. Okay, hit enter, and I'm just going to format this so it's easier to read. I'm going to make it into a number format, and there you go. Now this comes out to 
13.6 million. Let's do a quick check. Uh, we have Jan up to here, and then next is uh, February. So let's add up the revenue column manually, and we have 13 points, uh, 13, 604, 400. That's exactly what you're getting here. Now, if I were to double click and paste the formula down, there would be a problem. Let's see what happens. Okay, now the problem is as long as we have Jan, the month is January, it is repeating the same total down. And when it when the month changes to February, it switches to the total for February, but again repeats it down. And we don't want that. We only want the total to show once for January, and then you know these cells need to be blank. And then uh, up to here, these cells need to be blank. And then we need to have a, a total for February, okay? And by the way, let's, let's quickly check if our total for February is correct or not. So this formula is saying is 33.9, okay? So February is from this point onwards till, let's see where's February, February till here. 33913 Oops, sorry. Hang on, hang on. There you go. Sorry. Uh, 33913 965. 33913 965. That's exactly what we're getting. Okay. But, like I said, there's, a, there's an issue. Uh, what we need to do is we need to fix this. So it doesn't uh, repeat. So what we're going to do is we're going to use an if formula. If the first of this month, the entry here, is not equal to the previous one, then go ahead and do the sum. Otherwise, just put a blank. Okay. Now let's see what happens. Now it's only showing you the totals once for every month. Okay, and if you had to scroll down, once for every month. Now, another problem. What this is doing is, it is doing it for all these products combined. Now, we can get fancy and we can have three columns here for french fries, pizza, and tomato ketchup and have it do this for us. Or uh, we can do it on each individual sheet, up to you, okay? But that's actually how you would uh, make sure that you only get totals for the, for, you know, for the for months a month, uh, the grand total for the month, well, that's exactly again the subtotal for the month and not a running total. And the subtotal is only showing up once and not repeating itself all the way down. Okay. So, like I said, this is uh, in response to a request that was posted on Facebook. I hope that's kind of sort of what this gentleman uh, wanted. Uh, if not, uh, I'm going to post this on uh, this video is going to go on on YouTube and I'm going to post a link of that video on onto Facebook and I would uh, request this uh, person to uh, do give feedback if this is what this uh, he or she wanted and if not then obviously we can further uh, tweak this all right uh, that's it for this video uh, thank you very much for watching and if you did like this video please kindly give it a thumbs up and if you would like to see more videos like this uh, please subscribe. Thank you.